Hello, what's going on, guys? It's Steve, and welcome to Justice League of America, issue number 13 explained. So, hope you guys will enjoy this one. But first, I'm gonna say to you that hit the like button and hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this and if you want this kind of videos more and more. So, just uh, hit the like and share with you guys, uh, with other guys, and with other, your friends. So, anyway, let's start it from VSNS DC Comics, and this written by Jim Werner. So Steve Orlander doesn't waste much time showing us that indeed the person they found is not Ray Palmer, it is Preon. And she tells the team how she got Ray's bio build and that he is now missing. It's not a horrible start but Orlando's insistence in just throwing name after name at the reader is a bit annoying without any ground to stand on just yet. Plus it seems Ryan is upset that Ray didn't tell him everything he was doing in the microverse. When was he supposed to do that? It's not like they have been pen pals through all this. Ryan basically got an emergency transmission from Ray and acted on it. It's a very odd angle that Orlando is playing here. After some forced tension between Lobo and Killer Frost, we find out what Ray was searching for, the ignition point. Again, these things don't mean much at this point since we have no history with it, but it seems cool enough. Before heading back to Seattle, we get one more name for good measure. New Catarat. In Seattle, we get Black Henry and the Ray hanging out, drinking and talking. I like seeing Dina help out Ray, but it's interrupted by Afterthought, a name that goes well for this character. I had enough of in Orlando's Midnighter run at the end of the New 52. Back in the microverse, we are introduced to Mosga, the thinking planet, and this is totally different, okay? It seems that with the problems in the microverse, most have put hope in asking Mosga for miracles, which leads to an accidentally hilarious scene between Batman and a family with a son in a bag. It does make a little more sense when you read it, but just a little. Things get out of hand quickly and the League tries to protect Preon until she's shot by Aaron out. It seems that Preon was actually a pirate and had betrayed Ray and Art and he's back to set things right or is he? That's when a quantum storm suddenly hits and everyone scatters. As Lobo gets torn apart, Ryan comes up with a solution to everyone's problem. It's faith over science but also out of the left field and brings up the forced tissue of continued shrinking that Ryan talked about last issue. The issue ends with Ryan heading off to hopefully save the day. I really want to like this story. I want Ray Palmer back in the DCU. But why is Steve Orlando making it so hard to get there? I already mentioned the overabundance of names and places he just heaves at the reader but there is so much more wrong with this issue the pacing is way off and he seems content to develop things that mean nothing and then force feed us the important stuff out of nowhere ryan and frost talk about mosga as if they have known about him for years and it leads to ryan going to save the day based on what the hell is his plan based on i don't really know oh well i will continue reading this to get ray back but that doesn't mean i have to like it i liked even race art enough but is not up to his usual standards some of the pages look unfinished and the character work is inconsistent his microverse landscapes however are gorgeous and those actions are really cool so let me read it out from adventuresinputs.com and this review is by i'm gonna tell it by by whom by the awesome david brooke and he has written a really nice review about this one but i'm gonna tell it to you guys later but first let me tell you that justice league of america issue number 13 is following the footsteps of justice league of america rebirth from the start but the story of the action and the action looks cool and everything but the storyline is a little bit cheesy sometimes because 
Sometimes it looks too much lengthy and too much strengthening. They are stretching the story very far. So let's read David Brooke. Why does this matter? Orlando is exploring an aspect of the DC universe we just have not seen much of and that's exciting. Paired with even race, the art is detailed and big when it needs to be. The team is dragged into an adventure with the team Atom, a character that always delivers on entertainment value. Fine, you have my attention, what's good about it? This story really opens up the microverse angle in cool ways. So yeah, that's it for this one, Panic in the Microverse Part 2. So hope you guys have enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more amazing shows. Have a great day, adios amigos.